Ladies and gentlemen, at 7 p.m., please rise for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll call to order this meeting of the Town Council, the first item of business being approval of the minutes of August 19th meeting. Motion to approve the Town Council meeting uh, I'll set, I'll set. <laughs> from uh, August 19th, 2021, unless anybody has any com comments or questions. Uh. The motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The next item of business is an announcement, specifically a presentation by Studio JAED on behalf of the school department. Just for clarification, that's not an announcement for presentation. The announcement is just for any announcements that may need to be made by the council. Very well. So just to clarify that, just so I, I understood it as to be an announcement and I We've never voted on an announcement. If that's something was there, we'd have to put on unanimous consent to vote on it. So, and I know this is time sensitive, but this came to me yesterday, and there's an awful lot of material there. I won't to listen to anything, but I would appreciate anything like this. It's over 100 pages long. It come to me a couple of weeks before a town council meeting, instead of one day before a council meeting, because it's hard for me to absorb everything that's in there. Okay, and I know this is time sensitive, but I just want to make sure <coughs> we're not going to violate any ethics by voting on this tonight, which I don't believe we are. It's not an announcement. Okay. That, that word announcement is on every single agenda. Right. And that allows all of you to make an announcement if you need to. That's okay. why the word presentation okay. is highlighted. Okay. I just want to make sure that we were okay to vote on it without any problems. That's all. It's yes, good. to the school committee. Well, presentation is. It's on the agenda. Okay. That would be wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. I read it. It says consider, discuss, and vote to approve. That's right. Thank you so much. Sure. I think we truly did um, provide some overkill um, with the documentation. We certainly didn't have to provide all of that, but we felt we wanted full transparency during this process. Uh, and so um, I'm just going to proceed and then I will introduce Phil. We know that there are 220 or so children who learn um, every day down the street, but we sometimes forget that Wilbur McMahon is not just a school. It is a town building, the town's most valuable asset, and the only site equipped for uh, voting, for town meeting, for town recreational programs, for an emergency shelter. And earlier this year, we received a $50,000 grant, the school um, department did. If there's something out there that Ride is offering, I'm going for it. Um, and so the school building authority did give us the $50,000 to hire an architectural engineering firm to complete a stage one needs assess assessment, which we'll talk about um, soon, and a stage two uh, five to ten year capital improvement plan package. After consulting with the master price agreement uh, and sending out invitations to several firms, uh, two firms responded with letters of interest and Studio Jade was selected after I contacted several districts who have worked with them in the past, a Coventry, Newport, Portsmouth, etc. Uh, they have been on site at Wilbur McMahon several times already this summer, and last week they held an educational advocacy workshop in the library of the school with stakeholders where teachers and staff were encouraged to share their big dreams, their vision for Wilbur McMahon School with him and his team, uh, engineers, interior designers, etc., and, and an educational specialist. Um, Studio Jade has received glowing reviews uh, from 
uh, my fellow superintendents throughout the state, and now I see why. They took the feedback uh, from last week from stakeholders and so respectfully actuated it in some of the documentation in front of you. So if any of you nearly had a myocardial infarction when you saw some of the figures, I'm right there with you. Um, and, and, and just know that those figures, those various stages of improvements are aspirational and over a decade or more. Um, uh, beyond just the deferred maintenance components that are pretty immediate. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce um, Studio Jade, the principal architect. Uh, Phil is the president and CEO, and he has spearheaded the use of building information modeling, which he engaged last night. He had um, all of the documentation that you see in sort of 3D mode and was performing edits and emendations and all sorts of um, changes right before our eyes. And so um, Phil Conti is a, an architect, an artist, and a visionary. Um, so he did go beyond and presented you with more than just what we will be submitting to RIDE, which is stage one. He'll discuss that um, a little bit um, in, in more depth. So I ask for your forbearance and um, your open-mindedness. Forget about the figures and um, let's give him a welcome, Phil Conte from Studio Jade here in Little Compton. Come on up. Well, good evening everyone and, and thank you for having me here in and, and let me personally apologize for the wealth of documentation that was submitted yesterday. We're going to go through the, the critical points, but in many of the municipalities that we work in, they want to see as much information as possible. Some of it is not necessarily relevant, but critical to the submission. So I, I personally apologize. I am mindful of that going forward. We will have a much larger submission uh, in a stage two and we will certainly give you adequate time to review. So I would like to, if you would not mind, uh, look at the agenda. These are the things that I'd like to discuss and certainly we can talk about more. I do want to discuss the necessity for school construction process with you. Some of you may be familiar with, with it, um, but it is critical that we know what points are involved. The activities completed to date, we want to explain a little bit more about what that involved. Of course, the stage one submission, which we are here seeking approval to make, and then the next steps. So the next page in necessity of school construction, the most important thing to keep in mind is that it is required to receive housing aid reimbursement that we submit a stage one and a stage two, your five-year capital plan. So I do not want you to miss out on reimbursement. So we want to submit a five-year capital plan. Right now your housing aid is 35%. There are incentives available. You may or may not qualify for them. Some of them are set to expire in the next couple of years. There may be an extension, there may not be. But in any event, we want to be an advocate for you and raise your housing aid reimbursement if possible on any projects that you elect to move forward with. There are two important pieces to this ride process. That is stage one, which essentially is the documentation of the needs of the district. We are challenged by the school building authority and ride to engage with the school department and understand not only what the facility condition assessment needs are, what are opportunities for capital improvements, what are educational enhancement opportunities. That does not mean that they may move forward and develop into projects, but we are challenged with identifying the needs because the state wants Little Compton to move the ball forward, just like every other district, in teaching and learning into the new century. Stage two is where, as a group, 
we collaborate to define what are those projects, what are the solutions that you're going to move forward with to address some of the needs. You may elect to address only one of the needs, maybe some other needs that develop, multiple needs, but that is a collaborative process between the school department, the town council, and the community to define what those projects are and then submit that in stage two. The stage one submission is due September 15th. We are prepared with that submission. It is important to know that submission of the stage one does not commit anything or anyone to bond a particular project at a particular time. It simply means that the school department and the town council recognize that there are needs. We want to submit those needs for consideration and an invitation to submit a design solution. So in the next page, activities completed to date. We are an architecture and engineering company, so we were able to bring in architects and engineers to, re to review the facility. And uh, Chris and, and you all have been good stewards of your building. Okay? The, the building is in good condition. The facility condition assessment we conducted was for a 10-year forecast. Okay? So within the next 10 years, we're going to talk about components of the building that would have exceeded their useful life and should be planned to be, be, be replaced. But I can tell you from a lot of the buildings that I get to see in the state, this is very well maintained, very well kept. We're going to talk a little bit more about the deferred maintenance components. In order to understand the educational adequacy needs, we conducted administration interviews the educator workshop, which was very valuable to hear from the teachers how the facility may or may not be working for the delivery of curriculum and how that curriculum should be delivered 10, 20 years from now. And then, of course, we conducted a lot of data gathering, looking at some utility bills, existing drawings, etc. So the next page, the stage one submission, as I mentioned, we broke this up into three categories. We wanted to define the needs from a deferred maintenance standpoint, okay? What did we see in the building that should be replaced now, five years from now, or six to ten years from now? But while we're doing that, we're also looking for what we call capital improvement opportunities those opportunities would not surface in a deferred maintenance report because if it does not exist then it cannot be deferred but while we're there as practicing architects and engineers there are opportunities for capital improvements that could help the building perform better provide a space that is better for the students and staff and we want to capture them and we will talk about them in a little bit more detail and again, as I mentioned, the programmatic enhancements from the educators and their point of view. What do they need in a facility to teach the way they want to? And what would that need look like? So at a very, very high level, next page, you'll see that some categories have associated prices with them. So under deferred maintenance, as I mentioned, that deferred maintenance report stretches 10 years and we identified approximately $2.3 million in deferred maintenance over the next 10 years. Some of those larger numbers that you'll see come from building envelope components, exterior windows, etc. that within 10 years will have technically reached the end of their useful life. But we saw no evidence of leaking windows today or other deficiencies, but it's important for us to identify these now in a due diligence effort. Under capital improvements, we identified 4.7 million. Now those are opportunities that we saw over the next 10 years to improve the performance of the building. And we're going to talk about them in a little bit more detail. And then $5 million for programmatic enhancements. That is simply a placeholder, a high level dollar per square foot that we used
to address a very high level concept that we generated after our workshop with the educators. There has been no engineering associated with it, no in-depth design. These are high level placeholders to just present an order of magnitude of the need. Is that just a quick question to interrupt? Is that figured over 10 years as well? Yes, yes. And feel, anyone has a question, please, please ask. So if you would not mind, go to the deferred maintenance donut chart, all right? Now I want you to keep in mind this is over 10 years. We only need to submit a five-year plan to ride, and even that five-year plan, only 50% of the work is expected to be completed. But we can talk about the plan in stage two. So let's look at the deferred maintenance chart. You'll see where some of the larger dollars are associated with over the next 10 years. And they are building envelope and interior finishes. So for example, interior finishes, over the next 10 years, we would expect that you would paint that entire building. All right, that is, Hmm, $150,000, $175,000. The gym floor should be replaced over the next 10 years at about another $150,000. You have some VCT flooring that is starting to delaminate because there is some moisture issue that we're going to talk about. You start to see how that $750,000 could be spent over the next 10 years improving the interior finishes. The next big category is building envelope. So that's roof, windows, exterior doors, etc. Over the next 10 years, a significant number of the windows will be beyond their useful life and should be replaced. A window replacement project there is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The roof within the next 10 years will be a candidate for at least a roof restoration project at a couple hundred thousand dollars. So you start to see over the next 10 years for building envelope how you could spend over a half a million dollars. Then again the other categories HVAC that's not uncommon as equipment starts to wear, electrical and site improvements etc. We have a uh, detailed deferred maintenance report that we've just finished, which gets added to this stage one submission. That would take that document to another 20 pages long. Let's talk about the next one, which is capital improvement over the next 10 years. So what did we see as areas of opportunity? Actually, just a few. All right, let's start with one of the smallest ones here, acoustical ceilings. When we went through the space, the old part of the school, it's absolutely beautiful, well maintained, a gorgeous space, but the acoustics, much like this room, are very hard. And for teaching and learning, that's not the best environment. So we said, geez, we really ought to recommend adding an acoustical ceiling in here, and the new lighting that you have in place simply just gets lowered to that level of the ceiling. That for us was a professional recommendation that is value added. It's not on the deferred maintenance side because it doesn't exist, but should be in place. The next was some roadway and stormwater management improvements. So we recognized some problems and areas for improvement in terms of vehicular circulation on site, and I have an example that we'll show you. And then the last was air conditioning. Portion of the building is not air conditioned right now. There are high humidity levels. That what's um, made us think that the VCT is starting to delaminate a little bit. There are fans running in the school to make sure the corridor floors are not slippery from condensation. All of the projects we are doing going forward new construction and major renovation is introducing air conditioning into the school. Addressing the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning is, is pretty much um, the most important building component that we are addressing right now. So we wanted to recommend a capital improvement need for air conditioning portions of the school that are not air conditioned at this time. 
Now that 4.3 million I know is only a square foot cost right now and it includes a number of items typically associated with this. During stage two as we explore all of these projects in more detail the cost estimates get further refined so that you can make an informed decision. The next image you have is just an existing aerial of the school and let's go to the next one that has some markings on it. Now a very high level we saw an opportunity for a couple roadway improvements that could possibly be discussed in stage two. One is a pathway between two of the entrances to increase the length of drop-off to create a more safe site for pickup and drop-off. Another potential could be a loop around the playground area. Perhaps maybe that's just for buses since students would not be using the playground during pickup or drop-off. Those are high-level uh, concepts that we developed after our assessment and again these concepts that you're seeing are not part of the stage one submission remember the stage one submission is just the needs we are presenting to you our initial thoughts based on what we saw and based on what we think could further be discussed so, Phil, can I yes on that? yes so I understand the stage one of this process. So my initial thought, like your initial thought, is uh, I don't want to put a go-kart path around the playground uh, for many reasons. Uh, safety, you know, there's kids on swings here. I don't think you can guarantee there's not gonna be anybody in the playground when the buses are there. Uh, you have to adjust the walking path. Mm -hmm. yep. You had to adjust the walking path and put it in because there was a memorial tree there. So the walking path actually goes around the tree. So I don't know how far this path is going to go out into the playing field and how that is going to affect uh, how close it is to being in the outfield. So, you know, my background in, in being and doing stuff like this that really concerns me. Mm -hmm. To even see this kind of horrifies me. <laughs> So I just want to get that on the record. I, 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 you know, I understand exactly what you're saying, um, but I just wanted to let you know that I, I, I'm going to turn the page on that one. For my no, time. and that's fine. And, and I, and and certainly we can move on. And I appreciate that because that is, this is an example of what we want to do following this submission, so that we start to have serious discussions about concepts that we thought that may not be applicable at all because you are bringing a certain level of experience to us as we all start to engage in this collaborative effort to define what the best solution is for that. So I certainly appreciate it. Uh, the only other thing I'll make a comment on about this is the courtyard that is currently inaccessible because of uh, maybe two reasons. One, at egress in terms of the capacity of that courtyard space being able to discharge in two remote locations. Right now it can only discharge in one. And the other that it is not accessible at either floor level. So there, we saw that as an opportunity that is unused space. And could that be combined with anything else? The next slide you have talks about some concepts that we were exploring in the educational workshop and how the delivery of curriculum is different now than it was before and if you can quickly page through the next couple pages these are just examples of what new century teaching and learning spaces look like and unfortunately you don't have that yet in Little Compton doesn't mean we can't find a spot for it it just doesn't exist yet and the teachers were drawn to spaces like that because it gives them greater flexibility particularly at the middle school level to engage with their students in a different way giving them a little bit more opportunity uh, for learning not only inside the classroom but maybe directly outside in a small group setting 
Uh, you'll see some existing floor plans in your package. We have just finished uh, drawing them over again today for our use. Um, let's go to the uh, page that has the colored blocks in it. So again, similar to the aerial, where these drawings are not engineered, not designed, just some concepts that were quickly developed. We looked at a couple opportunities here. One is their outdoor learning space, that there was a desire to discuss making that a little bit more permanent, as well as using the courtyard space, maybe at the first and second floor level, for some spaces that are currently needed. All right, so I go back to the word needed. What did we hear a need for in terms of space? We know your enrollment is not increasing, okay? But we do know that student support services are often shared in small rooms, and that's not the best way to deliver those services. There is a significant lack of storage throughout the building. The cafeteria is a little bit on the small side. When Jacobs did their assessment back in 2017, they did not conduct a facility condition assessment, although they did recommend uh, some educational adequacy improvements because some of the rooms were undersized. Then we look at the second floor. We did hear there is a shortage of at least one or two classrooms to accommodate a bubble that may be going in throughout the school and the grade level. Well, when we looked at the art room, the art room is oversized. There's an opportunity to grab the additional classroom there. But is there an opportunity to take the media center and open that up into what we're calling a flex studio space, where those two spaces, flex studio one and two, could look like those images that we just showed you, giving the teachers an opportunity maybe for a larger space or maybe two smaller spaces. And immediately outside of that is a small, what I call studio extension space that's adjacent to the media center. So what you're creating now on that second floor at the higher grade level is a very student-centric space for, um, for, for exploring those new concepts in teaching and learning. And again, we're just high-level thinking using underutilized space, which is that courtyard right now. But again, I go back to say this is not part of the stage one. These are some concepts we wanted to quickly get out there so that in stage two we can have a very deep discussion on the value of all of these projects. The last page I have is the next steps. We are seeking approval this evening from the town council to submit the stage one. That will allow us to proceed into stage two where we can explore these design solutions, engage with the town council and the community on the best projects to put in that five-year capital plan, and then continue with that stage two submission, which is due in February of 2022. So, Phil. Yes. Can you, I'm not too good with uh, geometry, I guess, or whatever, but the unused courtyard, where is it on here, and what are you gonna do to it? Where is the unused courtyard? Yeah, where, which, which one can show me? Sure, so the unused courtyard. This one here. That is the first floor plan on the left, yeah. and the second floor plan on the right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you, uh, the unused courtyard is the area where we have identified new colored spaces. So we are not proposing any changes to the existing building at this time, other than perhaps the second floor art room, which can be reduced. What we're looking is to use that interior courtyard space in its entirety as found space, right? So we're not adding an addition to the outside of the building. We would be infilling the donut hole, basically. Um, you know, one thing that I was able to discuss last night is that I had an image of a scale. And, and that scale represents what, what I call responsible innovation. We want to be innovative for the teachers and the students in Little Compton, but we also know that we need to do this responsibly. 
And that's a balance. That's a balance between the project size, the project scope, the project cost, and the other side is debt ceilings, debt limits, other plans, maybe other town initiatives. If this project were to move forward and there was to be a bond for any capital improvements, the town may also have needs. There may be strategies for a later discussion on combining some of these. Those are all discussions that we want to participate in. I can only tell you that we bring a very open-minded, balanced approach to this. All right? um, and part of being innovative and re responsible would be using that courtyard. Right? We've got four walls already around us. We've got an underutilized space. On the second floor, it's very exciting because it is right next to the media center, which is, is dated and, and is not s providing the service that the media center specialists and the educators want to give the students of Little Compton. Keeping in mind, your enrollment is not skyrocketing, it is going down. But that doesn't mean that the level of service and the ability for your facility to deliver those services should be compromised if there's a way to do it that's cost effective, efficient, etc. Last thing I want to say is we want you to continue to be able to maintain your buildings in the high standard that you already have. So we certainly, um, we certainly want you to be mindful that in order to do that requires commitment over the next five to ten years. I, I'm certainly happy to answer any other questions. I, I hope to be presenting in front of you uh, more frequently as we approach the February deadline. Questions? Oh, I got a lot of them. Go ahead. But, uh, just, uh, well, I guess my first question is, because of the, uh, the importance of this and the amount of material that was submitted to us in such short notice, what's the procedure for going to ride and say, hey, we need an extension because we, we need time for the council to review this before they can make a, a vote on such a, a massive project. I know we're not committing to any money in stage one, but that's the way these projects evolve. You commit to stage one, then you commit to stage two, and it, it kind of snowballs. Uh, I would, I just want to know if there is, is there a means of asking for an extension to the 15th deadline before we go willy-nilly into this? Uh, n not that I'm aware of, and I have had the opportunity for working in Rhode Island since 2005. So, um, I I'm probably telling you the answer you don't want to hear. The answer is no. It is unlikely that you would be given an extension, particularly on a stage one, where, and I cannot speak for them, but the implied reaction I would receive is why you're simply identifying that there is a need in Little Compton. They could say to me, Phil, there is no need there. And the answer is, well, yes, there is a need. So they would expect our submission. Now, you received a technical assistance grant that expires, I believe, the, the end of this year. So we certainly don't want to see you lose that money as well. And just because we submit stage one doesn't mean you have to submit stage two. Uh, but I, I certainly don't want to see the process stop, particularly on stage one where we're simply identifying the needs. And they have a responsibility. They're going to take that document you have and they're going to look at it and they're going to see has Little Compton demonstrated that there is a need. They have, and I've seen it not happen on any of my projects, but where they not accept the stage one and they go back to the district or the school department in town and say, we don't agree with your needs. We don't believe you've proven to us that there is a need. Uh, I believe you do have a strong need. And again, it's relatively, um, I don't want to say minor, but it's targeted. There's deferred maintenance. There is an opportunity for some capital improvements. And we are addressing educational enhancements, which is what they would ask us for. Well, some of the things, um, I don't have any problem with the air conditioning. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm always fighting with the council president about how cold I want it because I work outside all the time. So I can understand the environment for a better HVAC. 
uh, with some of the classrooms. There's just some things in there that I would like to discern on my own behalf before I voted on this. What is what is a wish list that would be really nice to do? Uh, what, <coughs> what can we not do? What can we do? <coughs> I'm just it's just a mountain of information. Sure, and, and what and, you... And, and I understand, we're not committing to the money, but I'm looking, some of the things I'm asking, I, I'll go right back to the air conditioning. All right, it's it's 4.7, is that the 4.7, is that the 5? No, I got confused. 4.7. 4.7 million dollars. Does anybody do the net energy analysis to see what the future cost of the electric bill, what that impact's gonna have on the school budget? So that's a perfect question, and that is actually a specific requirement in the stage two process. The stage two process is, and, and, and I'm willing to work with you as we go through this, it is a much larger document that has specific criteria that we have to look at in terms of energy modeling, um, in terms of, of possible incentives. So again, we're not, submitting a project we're not even submitting a cost what we're saying is there is a need for indoor air quality and we would recommend that through heating ventilation and air conditioning and they would probably expect to see that coming but it doesn't mean that we have looked at with you yet where's the air conditioning going specifically is how are we are we combining it with the central plant is it a standalone VRF system? <clears throat> One thing that we saw when we did our assessment was that your heating plant is solid and you have ventilation. So adding air conditioning is not as burdensome as what we have seen in other places and in other buildings. That 4.7 is probably very conservative. All right? We will be going through third party cost estimating and engineering to develop what that final project and cost looks like within the stage two process, which is between now and the end of the year. I, again, I'm, I'm just uncomfortable. I, I understand there's no commitment as of yet, but these things tend to take a life of their own. You make one commitment, then you're obligated to make the next commitment, uh, whether it's modified or not. I just can't understand how we got such a huge commitment. It will actually be, I think, larger than the original renovation. In, in overall cost over 10 years, uh, and we get it with 24 hours notice. I mean, we got a package submitted early, which, I'm sorry, Carol, I didn't mean to get a little aggressive in the beginning, but we got a package submitted to us, and then we find out that the night before last, they had the subcommittee meeting, which was an hour before the school committee meeting, and the school committee meeting, and all of a sudden we get it. So what's, what we're reviewing is not something that was actually submitted by the school committee. It was submitted by the school without the school committee's approval. And then the school committee's approval came later. I think I've got kind of the chain of events going on. And it just, it's just a huge project. And that, that number really makes me nervous. And without having to be able to study it, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I went off. I didn't mean to, but I did. No need to be sorry. It's a reasonable question. I have a, I got Go. to. Yep. Go ahead. I have to agree with Pat on this. Uh, you know, the last project came in. We had different engineers and everything. This is the only way we can do it. This is the safest way to do it. Now another engineer comes in and said, no, that, that's not safe at all. That, that's totally not safe. We should do it like this. First of all, going around a one-way loop around a playground, in my opinion, is ludicrous. And my father went to school in Little Compton. My brother and I went to Wilbur. My children and I, and now I've got grandchildren going to Wilbur. So I got four generations going to Wilbur. And I've always been proud of the front of the Wilbur school with the trees there and the grass. And now you want to make a roadway in front of it? I, I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'm against that. I mean, I I'm, didn't want to vote on this because it got to me too late. I don't want to commit the town, because I'm representing the town. You're representing the school as you are. Mm -hmm. I'm representing the town. And when you see numbers of 12 million, and it's only going to cost us 7.8 million. Well, last time this, this school committee came in front of us, it was like 34 million or 35 million. It was going to be, by the time you get through with the bond and everything, it was going to be $43 million. And I was one person on the council that voted against that. 
And when the school found out that the rest of the town was going to vote on it, or they didn't think it was going to be approved, somehow that 40 or 34 million got whittled down to 11 million. Okay. So this is this is discrepancy. Like Paul says, how much is this is a wish list? You know, I'd like to have air conditioning in all my houses, okay? But I can't afford that. Can the town, the elderly people in this town, afford our taxes going up? We'll come up for a revaluation the end of December. And the way the house value is going up in town, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised when they get the tax bill. And then you're going to pump, pop this on top of my top of it. I'm just... Uh, just kind of overwhelmed with this whole thing coming to me so soon without any kind of notification that this was going to come to us. I mean, I, I, can't, I kind of feel that we're bound to vote on this to push it forward. But it's not the way I like to do things. I, normally, if this wasn't such an important project and it didn't have that time frame, I'd say no. I, I tell you, no, we're not going to vote on this tonight. We're going to have time to consume this, read it, make thoughts on it, highlight it, and bring questions up. There's a lot of this stuff that I'm seeing that you want to do. Assess deferred maintenance. Okay, so that's like a capital plan. Okay, I don't mind putting capital plans to let the town know what's going to cost us for the next 10 years. But then when you come, come out and deferred maintenance, 2.3, capital improvements, 4.7, and programmatic, prog programmatic enhancements. That just sounds like, well, the teacher's got a wish list that's $5 million that's going to cost the town $5 million. So, I mean, and the first thing in the front of this booklet that I read, the student population is 250, and then you got a graph in the, in the middle of it that says the school population children there in 2021 is 220. So is it 250 or is it 220? Okay, so there's erroneous material in here already. How much more of it is erroneous? Uh, let me address the enrollment one. Okay. We're waiting until the October 1 dates. And if we are uh, permitted to submit the stage one, it says in there that we will follow up with the NESDEC report. So the enrollment projections will be accurate for the stage two submission, although we do know it's declining. Regarding the uh, path forward, I sincerely appreciate and understand what you're saying, and I completely agree. For example, what started at $65 million in Portsmouth ended up at being $20 million for the submission. What started at $180 million in Newport ended up being 106 at submission. So it is an evolving process that that I, that I feel bad you feel this way because from my experience, I know we have the time to work together to get this where you want to be. The educational enhancement ones, remember that is my interpretation of our workshop. But if the only thing that comes out of that, that the art room is too big and we have a chance to reduce that and grab a classroom there, then that is a good thing. If the only thing that comes out of recognizing that we have some site deficiencies may not be a roadway, but maybe some additional signage, or as I learned, some additional parking that plans to be added, that is a good thing. Um, so I, I, go ahead. There was another, in one of the big packages that there was no anticipation for any more faculty. But then later on, there's a thought of putting two more classrooms in. So who's going who's to take care of those two extra classrooms? If there's no faculty going to be coming forward, who's going to take care of those classrooms? I can see the answer to that, Chair. Yes. Please. Thank you. Um, we have two teachers who push in. They do not have classrooms. They share a small office. One is 0.4 uh, technology teacher. They do not have a, even a classroom to share. They share a small office and they put their materials on the court and they push it. And so uh, it is, there's you know, a lot of space. Everyone can 
but it's not pushed um, very well. If you have beautiful oasis, which is you know, people all visit it and you know, gorgeous that is, and there's also uh, the courtyard to nowhere that is amazing, and um, there's a vast space that that is used. Um, one thing that I absolutely would honor and respect all of your feedback. I can share some of your views, um, but please know that in many Italian cities, stage one is not brought to the municipality. Um, and I was told that by the superintendents and our, um, our business managers that the stage one is, we don't have to bring this to the town, but it is not my style or you know, the culture of the that operates in full transparency to spring something on the town in February, January or February. Uh, that is not something that I want to be a part of. Stage two would be likely to be shocking and then it likely wouldn't be that hot. Um, but we wanted to set the stage here and talk about practical, practical aspects of the very business component and also um, capital improvements and an objective body came in and also um, teased out some conceptual changes, some 21st century learning enhancements. Um, right now we have these single dis discrete desks for all the children and we know that's not how we're delivering a lot of our instruction. We deliver instruction in uh, sort of a workshop model. We start off with a focus lesson for the entire class, and then we break out into small groups and do project-based problem-solving um, activities and um, final um, assessments are sometimes also um, done with groups and they submit a product rather than you know, a textual piece of an exam. And so the landscape of education has really changed and the structure of the building does not quite sync with that. Um, and so I think it, it, even since the $11 million project, um, life has changed exponentially um, the past decade or so. And this, um, this 18 month you know, pandemic era definitely sort of rooted out and highlighted some of the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of our spaces. Um, and so it is a rich list. You know, some things have to be done, and that's why we're here, and that's why I uh, grabbed the $50,000 grant uh, for technical assistance. Some things have to be done, and they put on in place. That's always um, part of the life of the building and maintaining them. And some things would be nice to, you know, to, would be nice if they happen. You know, some, some of the air conditioning um, <coughs> in the building, those are spaces that everyone sort of gravitates to, especially in May, June, September, October. Um, those are nice to have. And then the conceptual pieces of the um, outdoors with you know, the traffic flow. I also sort of freaked out the, um, you know, and the rise of the temple and the city and then so that I knew that was a high level conceptual, you know, uh, sort of rendering uh, of a solution to a problem, and that was that very small uh, bus staging area. It was so small that it was dangerous. The kids have to, the parents cross it in the morning, and, and it's um, to use uh, the phrase of a couple of families in the house. So those were just sort of conceptual solutions, not necessarily. Uh, Holly last night said, "Go away!" You know, around the you know, the um, playground, and Phil quickly said, "That was just you know, that was just an idea," and you know, sort of uh, focusing on consistency. So there's a lot of space around the school that we're not quite using it correctly, and there are spaces within the school. Um, that, that we're not quite using um, and maximizing and optimizing. So that's what this is about. Uh, I'm just forgetting about the, you know, um, I don't live here, I think I store it in the airport, and we just 
We've been through, uh, I've been through uh, a ride Seville before when we hardened, uh, hardened the entrance over mm -hmm. the school after the uh, Marjorie Stone uh, massacre that happened. Uh, that was a $500,000 product uh, project. And we went through stage one, stage two, stage three. I don't recall going to the, to the council when we were at stage one. So I'm not clear, I don't remember. Uh, do you have to go to a town council on stage one to get their vote? Stage two. On, on the back page it says next step submit stage one uh, school committee town council approval required if we don't need to go why is that in there so that, that uh, again I, I, yeah that's that's our best practice that it we have typically again since 2005 been more successful when we have engaged with the town in stage one so that they understand why we're saying what we're saying and, and they can be part of the solution. So I, I apologize for misleading you there with that statement. So, so, this, so, this, so, I'm, I'm no, no, so we're, we're grease, we're not necessarily necessary. We're just greasing the skids if you get our approval. It's not required. Well, go into the stage one application that you've gone to the council and they've supported it or voted to support it. Will you put that in? In your uh, paperwork, when you said oh, that? Uh, certainly in the in the executive summary, we could you say, and and actually where that surfaces is, is actually in in stage two as well. In case we want to show documentation, it's most important during stage two that they know that we are talking, right? Because you obviously are a critical part of this, and and that's why we want to just engage with you as early as possible with high-level concepts that, that may be controversial today, but certainly may disappear tomorrow as we start talking about these projects uh, more rigorously. And the, the word was used today, obligated. This the town is not obligated to anything if, if the school was to uh, process this through. You're correct. Stage one, this, whether we vote it up or down, it doesn't matter. It needs assessment. Right. Stage one is identification so I remember now. <laughs> I just, do you mind if I, ask, I just want to ask a couple of questions about the process um, that I'm not too clear on. What's the impetus for this riot scenario? Like, who started it? Was it the school committee or, or the superintendent of the office? Or where did it come from? Why? Why did it come from? And why came up with quite a bit of money for school districts, uh, also after um, school students and so forth. Did you do something that money? Was that before the pandemic? When all that hit, when they, when they, they yes. right. so before the pandemic, they, they realized that all these schools were just horrendous. Like, they didn't have the hamburger on the ground, and the tower were just horrendous. Like, all the hamburger on the ground, and the tower. And they threw a bunch of money, right? They got a bunch of money together. So, so I think where, that was the that's where we got the money. Yeah, I think that's yes. the history. <laughs> that was before. I can't remember before pandemic anymore. It was before. Okay. Yes. And, and just it was all over the news too. It was, it was exactly. awful. And and in little, Rhode Island. little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got two. Yep. So the state doesn't find itself with this kind of And so we knew that I received the fifty thousand dollars 
and they knew that the pandemic interrupted the process. I did receive it um, a year and a half ago. I asked the order to phone because of the pandemic, and I wanted to focus on uh, kids. And so it, so the grant did sunset December 31st of 2020. I submitted a, a request for a uh, referral, and I did receive it. And so it sunsets December 31st. Hence the tight window. Never did we expect that after you know, getting the grant for the two months, we'd shut down um, societies and do it. And the last thing on my mind was hiring an architectural engineering firm to help us to stay on course with the units of our building. Yes. So. And so we're tight here, and I understand it. The pandemic has affected every sector, including your superintendent's workflow. Um, and so here we are. Um, well, uh, I guess my, just my initial two thoughts are I appreciate you're engaging us in this process. Um, it's something that we, we don't need to be a part of this case once in a while. Thank you. Very helpful discussion, Thank you. very helpful presentation, great questions. I've got two questions and one observation. One of the questions has been answered in this latter part of the discussion. First question is what is being submitted? What is being submitted? And when I, I don't want to debate, an, but that's we are accustomed to having in front of us what it is that we're being asked to approve. I'd like to see what it is that's going to be sent in if we're to endorse it. Second question I believe you answered, what is the ride stated purpose of town council approval from their perspective? If I understand correctly, there is no ride stated requirement for the council to endorse uh, phase one. Is that, is that accurate? Okay. The other observation is, go ahead, sorry Brian. No, That's fair. The other observation is so that they would know we are talking and that's the one that I think you're hearing a great deal of commentary about. For example, we have a road program that's underway that is starting to take, uh, it's going to start on Maple Avenue, but it's going to start in a number of other places simultaneously. That's the kind of thing that we need to be talking about this leg of the commons, commonly known as School Street, that's the place that we need to be focusing on for many of the things you're talking about here. So those roadway improvements. The stakeholders included the staff of the school and properly so, but there are stakeholders represented in the town that I would exhort you to think about in stage two that you need to come to us early enough that we can engage those people so that they can have a role in it. Because the last thing you want to do is come forward with a project similar to the way it was brought forward a number of years ago that is four times what we end up spending and only because it was indeed aspirational. We need to bring it down to something that we want to put in front of the people. And when you ask the town council for its endorsement, 
that should be the people speaking. And we don't take lightly the idea that somehow we're the five smartest gentlemen and a lady and a gentleman on the planet in order to be able to give that answer. Rather, we go to the people with a public hearing. So my first re reaction to this was, we have no time to do that. I guess what you've said to me is, if we, if we choose to avoid the best practice or uh, fail to engage the best practice of giving a council endorsement, this project, I mean, this submittal goes forward. So to me, that is the way that we ought to go. We ought to have the school committee submit this stage one without the council's endorsement, would be my position. And then we would get engaged in this process such that in stage two we can endorse. How about a motion? Because I don't want to negatively impact it either by taking a vote and then we end up, no. I don't want to do that either because that'll put a negative connotation on, on the submittal. How about just a motion that the council takes a vote on this and let them submit it? That way we haven't endorsed it, but we haven't gone I, against it either. I would suggest that your motion might be that the council takes no position on this and leave off the fact of let them submit it. I don't think you're saying that. Uh, maybe you are. No, I'm just. I don't want to. I don't want to prejudice this submittal, but I also don't want to endorse it yet because I. It's huge. Well, do we, so, do we want to place it on file? So can I? Can I ask the, the Phil? Phil, um, what would you like? What would be uh, the best case scenario on your writings in the back of this uh, uh, phase one that you would want us to do? Endorse it, number one. Sure. My, 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 my preference would be an, an approval by the town council to submit. However, if you feel you need to amend that motion to include language, then go ahead and do so. But certainly, as we go into the next several months of engagement, your, your voices will be heard. And then, of course, we'll seek approval again in February for the actual submission of the stage two. So, our preference would be an approval to submit, and if you feel necessary to qualify that, then certainly do so. That's just my opinion. So, well, I mean, if you'd like to comment, I mean, the best practices, let's go back to that, that's important. Best practices to not give this kind of material to the town council 48 hours in advance. That's why we're here. And I don't know what happened on, on the other end. It can be easy. Yeah. Uh, insurmountable. But that's the best practice. Now, that doesn't mean the council cannot catch up with where you are because you are a professional and you're ahead of us here. So let them catch up to it. But right now, if they take no vote, uh, that's not a, a, a negative impact. But, I mean, this town, that guy working the camera likes to be involved with these kinds of decisions. So I, I, would, I would suggest that, uh, it, it, that the council respectfully says this is a wonderful presentation, very knowledgeable, very sure, very informative, but the council has to answer to the voters. Well, I think, I think stage one, is you don't need the council. You don't need them to support it or not support it. You just leave it out of your stage one. I think that's what we did when we did our other projects. But you don't mention this town council. I know we didn't when we did the, the parking of the entrance. So my motion then would be that we... Now we're on the next one. Well, we place it on file, we take no action. We were asked to consider, discuss, and vote. The motion then is to place the matter on file. On file. And the second is to place the matter on file. Is there further discussion? Thank you for your presentation. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. We are much smarter than an hour ago. And we but will we, have our eye on phase two. On we need two. to be kept in the loop so that we know what's going on, okay? You can go through the count, town council president and it'll go down to us so that we'll know what your proposals are, what's going to happen. Not the night before we have a meeting, okay? Yes? I would just like to add to this. There seems to be a, a feeling that you will catch the loop or that there's some, some kind of 
And I believe the wording of the motion and the second were with that in perspective. There is no judgment as to its adequacy or its uh, shortfall or any any of that. The decision was to place it on file. And I think we are now better informed and we are ready to be supported. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. The next item of business is a series of eight department head reports. Motion to place all the department heads on file, unless anybody has any questions or comments on the reports. I do. I, sir, I, I got a Motion is made and seconded. seconded. Yes, sir. Just two quick ones. On the uh, Tom Clark, um, uh, the hiring meetings coordinate the IT personnel for day to day issues over the city daily needs. What are your visual needs in council chambers and prep for hybrid meetings? Uh, just give us an update, Carol, where we are on that. We supplies for the sound system have almost all been received it's anticipated that hopefully next week or the week after we'll be able to start transferring the microphones and the speakers and doing all of that the sound uh, attenuation panels are supposed to be shipped september 20th so providing that all happens beginning of october we should be refitted here with Thank you, new sound the other one I have is finance department. And we don't have our finance guy come to me to do it, usually. That I've noticed. Okay. So I just throw this out there on, on his sheet here. Uh, the third bullet says COVID vaccination expense tracking continued for future state and federal reimbursement. I hate to ask dumb questions, but uh, what is that? Look, you just explain that to me. Yeah, uh, explain that. Yeah. The COVID vaccination, actually, there were three types of reimbursements that came to the town one we received, which was the COVID, the initial one, and there was the vaccination piece, which was when we set up the pods uh, in Tiverton, and also uh, locally in uh, the school, and uh, those vaccinations, we need to have the percent that we need to keep track of all the expenses. That's with the chief and Joe. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Thanks. The next item is old. Need to vote on. Motion uh, made and seconded. Place, place it on the file. <laughs> Thank you. The motion is made and seconded to place the department head reports on file. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next item of old is old business to update a vote on acceptance of the amendment to chapter eight of the Little Compton Town Code to include in that acceptance an effective date, which was previously omitted from the vote taken on August 19th. The Motion. administrator has a proposal as to the as to the date. Go ahead. If it, what did you? Uh, I, would, I would request that the town the council and the rationale is one, um, I'm trying to work with the non traffic again, work with the department of public works, so we actually can do this in the development of recovery. Uh, there are some things that I need to work with them, you know, of course, to really uh, signage at the transfer station needs to be included. So there's some things we need to address before we actually, you know, can you make sure that the the contractors that are currently using the dump as their transfer station for construction debris, can you make sure that there's a way that they're informed so they can make plans? That's already in place. Okay, right. we, we have that ready as right. soon as I know the dates. Thank you. That's already yep. done. And I just, I think Andrew and I were talking to the same guy, but I basically have a, a one-man show to 
Mr. Mencho and the handyman. Now they're saying, I can't take my, change a window out of somebody's house and I can't take it to the dump anymore. I'm gonna have to get a $500 dumpster to throw that window in. What do, what do I do? I, I think we need to clarify what. You know, I, I asked that to the uh, Department of War Works. I asked that question and I really didn't get an answer. You know, what can a person bring to the dump, a window? I mean, it, it's, I, I didn't get an answer. And the, the, question, the question that was asked, sorry, Carol, the question that was asked was, the homeowner can throw his truck and take it, but yes. I can't take it out and put it in my truck and take it. That's a contract. You can't yeah. be a contractor is what you voted. You won't allow contractors right. to commercially operate jobs and then bring the truck. Right. Right. The, the homeowner, if he's changing a window, or he has his handyman just change that one window for him, can bring that window right. himself. Okay, I just think that has to be clarified because the little guys are all... That is part of what he's talking about with respect to a 1 January start. Yeah, okay. Is to understand how a person does what you're yeah, suggesting. I think that, I, I hear it. it needs to be clear, it needs to be clear what the contractor can bring. A window, a, a tall stop, period. And the, the homeowner can bring one thing and a tall stop, that's it. But right, if you don't, if you don't have that, contractor cannot. Bring it. Contractor the way you voted it, I, I don't agree with that. They should be able to bring. It. If they take a window out of my house and they, and they take the little bit of debris out of the, the, the garbage can, they should be able to go. That's not what you let's voted. Change it. I, I didn't say that's what we voted, but I'm saying you know that that's what I think a, a little kind of contractor should be able to do. But that but that's the can of worms. That's that's where okay. Where does it go from one window to two windows to five windows? To the well, that's the thing. Pickup truck. When does it pick up truck? When does where does it where does it end? And you can't put a, a, a weight amount. You can't do anything on it. Again, it's. I'm going to suggest that on the first by the first of January we work out those issues. That's the reason for putting this out there. We may choose to amend the ordinance if necessary. But let's see if we can't find a way to make this work. Was there a motion made to accept? Yes. Okay. All right. Is there it any further discussion? No. 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 Motion to uh, use the date of January 1st, 2022 to amend Chapter 8 second. of Little Comp Town Code. The motion is made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next is a memo from the administrator offering a timeline for three things. Paving Maple Avenue, sorry, a timeline for paving, a letter to be sent to each Maple Avenue resident, and a request to authorize an RFP to be advertised. Motion to approve Second. all requests by the town administrator. Second. The motion is made and seconded to approve those three uh, statements. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thanks. Thank you. The next is new business, to review the American Recovery Plan Act recommendations, to amend them as you may feel is needed, and to schedule a public hearing. I would propose that public hearing be as early as our next meeting. Motion to hold a public meeting on the American Recovery Rescue Plan Act at uh, the next town council meeting. I'll second. The motion is before, made and seconded. Uh, before the next town council meeting or just during it? What, what's your motion? As well, we're generally at, yeah, as part of the meeting. We're part of the meeting, okay. yeah. I'll second that. So the motion is made and seconded to schedule a public hearing at the next town council meeting on September 23rd. Um, are there any additions, revisions, et cetera, that you want to make here, or are you ready to present this to the people? Uh, question number two. Was there, was there any consideration to presenting um, you know, like a solar development plan for the town? Or like for finding a way to, to move towards renewable energies using this? Can we use this, this money for any sort of project like that? And that's not something that they really push into infrastructure is one of the biggest things, you know, uh, in supporting, you know, like, uh, one of the sub-recipient sub 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 grants there is the, the community center yeah. because it's about seniors, it's used as a cool and uh, you know, warm center. So there's some things that are needed there for the But it can be considered like energy infrastructure or for saving money in the long term. I'll check, I'll check. I think it's worth a 
Tony, you, uh, Tony, we're going to be able to use some of this money to for the paint in the town hall project. That's what the bullet, the okay. sub bullet. Well, I, I just said that. Right. Calm down. Yeah. Okay. Any further? Any other discussion? If I may, just yes. very quickly, uh, the somewhat the urgency for us to keep moving through these different steps and have a talk is that they obviously gave them an out towards the attempts uh, that we made to get public um, involvement on um, the projects that was not just us in uh, a small setting. And we also have to see the push before the popular push and indicate what have we done thus far. Even if we have not used the money for we we need to list the projects, we engage you know, the council and the public at a public hearing. So it's important for us to demonstrate where we are moving forward. Motion Thank on you. the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next item of business is a request from the Little Compton Game Club for a Class F1 one-day beverage license. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The next is a communication letter from the tax assessor asking the council to correct a typographical error. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next is a communication received from the TD of the Technical Director of the SWCA Environmental Consultants supplying several documents relating to the South Fork Wind Farm Project. For um, comment. Well, this has to do with historical, um, anything historical, submerged landforms or anything like that. So this doesn't really have any impact on us, so I'm going to make a motion to uh, place this on file. Second. Motion made and seconded to place on file any discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you. The next item is a abatement list received from the tax assessor. As you can see, this is also self-explanatory. I talked to the tax assessor on this. What it was, there was a bill sent out and the $18,000 veterans exemption was included in it and these people are the buyers of those properties so they don't uh, qualify for the veterans exemption so we have to abate this amount and then she's going to rebuild um, I believe it's $108 for each one of them so we're actually going to abate this but we're actually going to bring in uh, $216 after she rebuilds it that's the process she does any questions Uh, so, uh, motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The next is a letter sent to the administrator regarding a notice of intent for the Sunrise Wind Farm Project. Comments to be received by September 30th. This is also an offshore wind farm. It uh, is probably 25 miles off the con. If you can look at the diagram, you see Block Island to the west of it um, and what they're trying to do is this uh, transmission line goes actually goes into uh, Montauk so this doesn't relate to us so I want to make a motion to place this on file. I'll second. Motion made and seconded to place on file. Any further discussion? Yeah just the putting mechanical devices out in the open ocean is not the brightest idea in the book and I, they're heavily subsidized every country that's done it. Um, so they're not really cost attention. I'm all over them for land, but when it comes to the water, I don't think it's a great idea. And the fishermen, I concur with you because the fishermen feel that once these things are obsolete, they're supposed to be bonded to have the money to take them out of there, but we don't believe that's going to happen. Are they going to sink to the bottom? And the guys that use nets to trawl on the yeah, bottom the are going to get Companies will declare bankruptcy and walk away from them. Right. Anyway, and Very it's good. also going to cost more money for electricity. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The consent file. Motion place consent calendar on file unless anybody wants to pull anything for discussion. I do. Uh, I'll, I'll second, second it. Sure. Let him pull. Just three, just quickly. I, I see the, the school has this uh, resolution, and, and I just read a paraphrase. It says, Little Compton School Committee 
encourages all Little Compton School Department employees and students who are able to do so to promptly receive the COVID-19 vaccine as is made available to them. And I apologize if I don't know this, I should. Has the town council uh, have, uh, have a similar resolution or passed anything or said anything for uh, town employees uh, to recommend that they get the, the vaccine? The answer would be no, no. Off the, right off the beginning. Okay. Appreciate that. With that discussion then, is there a motion to place is there any further discussion with respect to the consent file? We have a motion to place it on file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks. The payment of bills. Motion and you should pay. have a uh, updated copy that includes a series of national grid bills at the bottom. Yes, motion to pay the bills. Second. Thank you. Quick question, and yep. believe it or not, uh, for my uh, ongoing knowledge here and my training, CAI Technologies Capital Expenditure System. Can you tell me what that is? CAI Technologies. GIS. Yeah. GIS? Yes. Okay, which doesn't mean anything to me. Yes. CAI doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> this so you get to explain both. Well, digitizing of the uh, assessor's maps. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So there's there's a, there's a little bit of a charge for that, huh? $2,500. That's the first charge. We awarded them a contract after competitive bidding to, to digitize our charts. We look forward to learning about that also. Thank you. you sure. Drop by any time. I will drop by. I have plenty of time to do that. <laughs> Actually, Denise would be the best person. Denise, well, now I know. That's all. Any Thank further you. discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very well, well, we'll then close this open session yes. of the town council so and I'll select. Did I the uh, number four? Did you do that one? That was, we, you just pulled number three to talk about it. No, I'm sorry. Gotcha, thank you. Oh, I mean, yeah. that. Ignore that. Um, we'll close this open session, ask that the camera be removed and ask that those who are not part of the executive session which I anticipate lasting only brief, a brief moment, uh, would make it. Thank you.